In the previous videos of the diode, we learned that the diode allows the flow of current only in a one direction and it blocks the current in the reverse direction. Now this property of the diode is very useful in certain application and one such application in which this diode can be used is AC to DC conversion. Now the process of converting the AC voltage signal into the DC voltage is known as the rectification and the circuit which is used for this rectification is known as the rectifier. Now broadly these rectifiers can be classified in two categories. One is known as the half wave rectifier and the second one is known as the full wave rectifier. So in this video we will learn about the half wave rectifier. Now whenever the sinusoidal signal is applied as an input to this half wave rectifier then this rectifier only allows the one half of the sine wave and it rejects the other half of the sine wave. Like here as you can see it only allows the positive half cycle and it completely rejects the negative half cycle. And similarly it is also possible to get this kind of waveform where this rectifier completely blocks the positive half cycle and it only passes the negative half cycle. So in this way this half wave rectifier converts the AC signal into the pulsating DC signal. Now let us see the circuit of this half wave rectifier. So as you can see over here the input signal is applied to the load through this diode. So whenever the sine wave is applied as an input then at the output you will get this kind of waveform. So here this circuit only passes the positive half cycle of the sine wave and it completely rejects the negative half cycle. So now let us understand how the circuit works. And for the analysis purpose, for a moment, let us assume that this diode is an ideal diode. So during the positive half cycle, the voltage which appears across the anode and cathode of the diode will be positive. It means that this diode will get forward biased. And simply we can replace this diode by the closed switch. So this entire voltage will appear across the load. So during the positive half cycle, from 0 to T by 2, the complete input wave will appear across the load. Now during the negative half cycle, the voltage which appears across the anode and cathode will be negative. So this diode will get reverse biased and simply it will act as a open switch. So there will not be any flow of current through the circuit and at the output we will get zero voltage. So during the negative half cycle, we will get zero voltage. And in this way, Whenever the continuous sine wave is applied as an input to this rectifier, then at the output we will get either positive or negative pulse strains. Now so far in our analysis, we have assumed that the diode which is connected in the rectifier circuit is an ideal diode. But now let us also consider the forward voltage drop across the diode. So now the diode will get forward biased only when the applied input voltage is more than threshold voltage. And here we are assuming that the connected diode is silicon diode. It means that it has a threshold voltage of 0.7 volt. So the diode will get forward biased only when the input applied voltage is more than 0.7 volt. So now the circuit will start conducting only during this period. So during the positive half, if you see the output waveform, it will look like this. And if you see the peak voltage at the output waveform, it will be slightly less than Vm. Because now we are also considering the forward voltage drop across the diode. So instead of Vm, it will be equal to Vm minus 0.7. Now during the negative half cycle, the voltage which appears across the diode will be negative and simply it will act as an open circuit. And the output voltage across the load will be equal to zero. So during the negative half cycle, we will get zero voltage. Now in most of the cases, during this rectification process, the peak amplitude of the applied input voltage used to be a much larger than the diode voltage. So the output waveform of the rectifier will be much closer to the ideal waveform. And in that case, we can simply neglect the drop across the diode. Now that is being said, let us see few performance related parameters for this half wave rectifier. And the first parameter which is defined for this half wave rectifier is the average value. Now if you see the waveform of the half wave rectifier then mathematically it can be represented like this. So during the first half from 0 to t by 2 
the waveform can be expressed as vm sin omega t while for the other half from t by 2 to capital t it will be equal to 0 so the average value can be given as 1 by t integration 0 to t vt dt and if we put the value of this vt then we can write the average voltage as 1 by t integration 0 to t by 2 vm sin omega t dt and if we solve this expression then the average value for this half wave rectifier will come out as vm by pi now we have already derived this expression in the earlier video of rms and average value so i will give the link in the description for that video so you can check that video for the more information similarly the next parameter which is defined for this half wave rectifier is the rms value so the rms value of any given signal is given by this expression that is the square root of 1 by t integration 0 to t v square t dt and if we put the value of this vt in this expression and if we evaluate the value then the rms value for this half wave rectifier will come out as vm by 2 now if you are wondering that from this integration how we have arrived to this expression then don't worry we will derive this expression in the next video now so far in our discussion of this half wave rectifier we have only discussed about the output waveform of the voltage but whenever this diode is conducting at that time finite amount of current will also flow through the circuit so if vm is the peak amplitude of the sinusoidal wave then the peak amplitude of the current can be given by the expression vm divided by rl and if you see the output waveform of the current then it looks very similar to the voltage waveform and mathematically it can be represented like this so if you find the average value of this current then it can be given as im divided by pi that is equal to vm divided by pi times rl so in this way we can find the average value of the current so the next parameter for the rectifier is the peak inverse voltage and it defines the maximum reverse voltage which appears across the diode during the operation so here if vm is the peak amplitude of the applied sine wave then during the negative half cycle the maximum voltage which appears across the diode in reverse condition will be equal to minus vm so we can say that for this half wave rectifier the peak inverse voltage or the peak reverse voltage will be equal to vm now whenever you are selecting the diode for the rectifier then you should need to check the piv rating of the diode so the peak amplitude of the applied input voltage should be less than this piv rating so now let's move to the next parameter so so far we have seen that whenever the sine wave is applied to this half wave rectifier then at the output we will get a pulsating dc voltage it means that it has some finite ripple now this ripple defines the periodic variation in the output DC voltage because of the imperfect suppression of the AC signal. So to define how much ripple is there in the output waveform, this ripple factor is used. And this ripple factor is defined as the ratio of RMS value of the ripple in the output waveform to the total average value of the output waveform. And for the half wave rectifier, the value of this ripple factor is equal to 1.21. So we will derive this expression for the ripple factor in the next video. Now the ripple in the output waveform can be reduced by using the filter circuit. So just by connecting the capacitor across this load, we can reduce the ripple in the output waveform. So let us understand how this circuit will reduce the ripple. And for a moment, let us assume that the diode is an ideal diode. Now during the positive half cycle, Whenever the applied input voltage across the diode is positive, at that time this diode will get forward biased and simply it will act as a closed switch. So through this diode, this capacitor will get charged and it will get charged up to the peak voltage of Vm. Now once this capacitor will get charged up to this voltage Vm, then the diode will become reverse bias because at that point at both anode and cathode it has a same voltage. So at that time this diode simply will act as a open switch. So after this time 
the charge across the capacitor will get discharged through this resistor RL. So this yellow line which you are seeing in the waveform is the discharging of the capacitor. Now here we are assuming that the RC time constant of the circuit is much larger than the time period of the waveform. So if this condition is true then we can assume that the capacitor is discharging linearly. Now once again whenever the capacitor reach at this point at that time the input voltage is greater than the capacitor voltage and once again diode will become forward biased. So during this portion the capacitor will get charged through this diode and once again it will get charged up to the peak voltage Vm and then after again it will get discharged through this resistor. So in this way because of the charging and discharging of the capacitor we will get this kind of waveform. So here this time T1 is the charging period of the capacitor and this time T2 is the discharging time of the capacitor. Now like I said before here we are assuming that the RC time constant of this filter is much larger than the time period of the waveform and if this condition is not satisfied then the capacitor will get discharged rapidly and to avoid that problem we should always check this condition. So by properly selecting the RC time constant of the filter we can reduce the discharging of the capacitor and hence we can also reduce the ripple in the output waveform. So as you have seen using this filter circuit we can reduce the ripple in the output waveform. But still if you see the output waveform it has some finite ripple and the peak to peak ripple can be given by this expression that is IDC divided by FC where IDC is the average current which is flowing in the given circuit while F is the output frequency of the half wave rectifier and C is the filter capacitance. Then the next parameter which is used for this rectifier is the efficiency. So this parameter defines how efficiently the AC input power is converted into the DC output power and for this half wave rectifier the efficiency is equal to 40.6%. It means that from the given input power only 40.6% of power is getting converted into the DC power. And as you can see in case of this half wave rectifier the efficiency is less than 50%. So these are the few performance parameters for the half wave rectifier and these parameters can be improved by using the next type of rectifier circuit that is the full wave rectifier circuit and we will see about it in the separate video. Now before ending this video let us see few applications of this half wave rectifier and one of the most obvious application of this half wave rectifier is in AC to DC conversion. So here the block diagram of linear power supply has been shown. So as you can see from the block diagram at the first stage the input voltage is stepped down using the step down transformer and then it is applied to the rectifier circuit. So at the output of the rectifier circuit you will get pulsating DC voltage and the ripple in the output waveform is reduced using the filter circuit. Now although this filter circuit will reduce the ripple in the output waveform but still some variation will be present in the output waveform and that can be removed using this regulator circuit. So any variation which is present at the input of this regulator will be taken care by this regulator circuit. So in this way using this half wave rectifier circuit it is possible to convert the AC signal into the DC signal. But in practical cases this half wave rectifier circuit is barely used because it has very poor efficiency as well as large ripple. So in practical cases full wave rectifier circuits are more preferred over this half wave rectifier circuits. Then the next application of this half wave rectifier is in demodulation of the signal. So if we apply this modulated signal to this half wave rectifier circuit then it is possible to recover the envelope from the carrier frequency. So these are the few applications in which this half wave rectifier circuit can be used. And in summary here is the list of different parameters which is defined for the half wave rectifier. Now among these parameters we will derive few parameters in the next video. So I hope in this video you understood about the half wave rectifier circuit. If you have any question or suggestion do let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video hit the like button and subscribe the channel for more such videos. 